if he had mer- was made of mercury, he'd splatter over. Do you know what I mean? So, when you start thinking in relative terms, how does a fish know when to go right or left? You know, you see a whole bunch of fish moving this way and that way. When does the fish say, hey, i got to fly left, or a bird? They all seem to move in, in, fast in one direction or the other. It means that when you dissect a bird, you'll find that the optic nerve is connected to the wings. So when another bird is here, the optic nerve twists the wings. So fish are the same way. They see a fish move, and the, the optic nerve of the fish is connected to the fins and rudder. They don't say, hey, i got to go left. Hey, i got to go right. That's the intellect. Now, no human can do that, keep up with mosquitoes. You know, they chase each other. When the hell do you say, hey, he went left? By the time you say that, he's made 400 moves. How can an insect do that? They say some insects only live three days, but they may see things faster, meaning a ball in motion to use. But to an insect, they can see it in detail because they see more per second than we do proof that they move their wings super fast like a little insect flying has to move his wings the smaller the insect the faster the movement and people say if you try to figure it out insects don't have enough wing area to beat on the air but if they move it fast enough and do they move it or is it moved Uh, does the insect respond to environment or is the insect making decisions I think I'll fly with a flock they fly with a flock the birds, they don't say I think I'll fly with a flock do you know what I mean and if fish behave in unison they all go to the right or left the, the ichthyologist that studies fish thinks that the fish make a bigger mass so the sharks see a bigger mass and they won't attack the fish They think that animals do that for that purpose, to look like a large unit when all the fish are working together. You know what I mean? Just say that it seems that fish do that and some fish swim away when there's a larger mass. But don't say they do it to appear larger. Some animals spread their feathers out. They say they look larger and meaner. They say that's why animals look ugly. They have fangs and horns so they scare other another animal doesn't say he's terrible looking they don't that's a human projection and humans project like mad and that's why they kill each other they believe if you ever live brought up in a society that you know has 15 gods because that's the way they brought you up when a guy comes to town and there's only one god that guy doesn't sound right to you you say what are you a troublemaker an agitator? The guy said, no, I really believe there's one guy. He said, I really believe there's 20 gods. Who's right? They're both full of shit. But if you're brought up that way, it seems right. The way you tip your hat to a lady. In the old days, people used to tip their hats to ladies. Did you know that? When I was a kid, it was normal. I haven't seen a guy do that in years. And a man always opens the door for a lady in a car. If the lady doesn't open the door, that's all gone. But one person used word like right or wrong. Is it right or wrong? All I can say is there are more efficient ways of doing things. And as time goes on, we probably will learn more effective ways of doing things that correlate with the real world. But you can't say that man should open the door for a lady. That's the right thing to do. You can say that's a custom of a given area. Is that clear? So these are the tools to think with. If you try to think about man without those tools, like relativity, values are relative, you can say that the floor seems to be moving. But I really don't know. You can say that. You can say that when airplanes used to fly 40 miles an hour, they were the fastest thing on earth. But when they fly 4,000 miles an hour, people would say, we can never stand that. 
We can if we slowly accelerate. You know what I mean? If you pick up speed slowly, if you try to go from 50 miles an hour to 4,000 miles an hour, the guy would flatten out against the seat, just like falling, if you shove the guy too fast. So rockets travel as fast as man can stand it. If it travels too fast, he'll collapse on the floor. Do you know what I mean? When an airplane turns in the old days, you can make an airplane turn faster. The guy's blood rushes down to his feet and he conks out. And the higher you go, the more oxygen you need because the oxygen content is diminished. But they found out that oxygen causes the teeth to become loose and you tend to lose your teeth flying altitude a great deal. There's no way to know that until people begin to lose their teeth. And people say, of course, we we can't fly high with a lot of oxygen. Because they learned that. But if you hadn't learned that, you'd say, I've learned something new. That's what I mean when I say no human being makes a mistake. They can't know what to do in the old days. They can't know that a blunt piece of wood will not go into the animal. But if they break off a branch and it's broken with a wedge, it goes in the animal. So they sharpen things. But they can't know that before trying something. So that's what I mean by man never makes a mistake. But if he learns new things through experience, he can apply that. Science tells you that if you went to another planet and it was uh, six times the gravity of the Earth, and I said, let's go for a walk, you say, no thanks. Because to lift up your leg, if it weighs... 100 pounds is 600 pounds. The understand? So nobody goes for a walk. And all the laws of designing buildings, a thick base, you know what I mean? And you say, Jesus Christ, look at the shape of the buildings here. They're not wrong. They're in accordance with the laws of that planet. So when you measure things on Earth, you're measuring things in relation to man. Do you understand? But if a guy comes to another world and his legs are that thick, and his bones are that thick, like a dinosaur. He said, well, in our world, gravitation is here we can bounce around. It's strange. And so when men write scientific laws, they're based upon the effects of environment on us here. When a guy says, what is the truth about things? It's a ridiculous question. You know, what do people do on another planet where things are much heavier where there are some planets they say that uh, their gravity is so great that if you landed there even if you could land there you'd flatten out on the earth into a blob because the gravity is so great it'll pull you right down and flatten you out you know what I mean can we go to those planets well gee we have to develop very different systems I won't say no but we'd have to develop very different systems. But I think that uh, evolution is like the first fish that crawled out of the water, the lung fish. It could breathe underwater or out of the water. It crawled out of the water because it was able to. That's why I say in the future, if a living organism went into the sea, they'd change their shape and swim away like a fish. When they came out of the sea, they'd have legs and walk around like a man. That's what evolution is, but it happens over millions of years. But if it happened instantaneously, if you lived one-tenth of a second, there'd be no waves in the ocean. There'd be, the ocean would be frozen like that. If you could see one-tenth of a second, there'd be no motion. No trees would move in the breeze. Do you know what I mean? They'd be stationary. So you would write about your world. It's a stationary world. And we can't write about the world. We can only write about our impressions with our receptors. Do you understand that? So if you ever become a truth seeker, you'll stop learning new things. Because it stops you. You think that everything you measure is the way things are. I know they're not due to experience in that area. So, I would probably guess that a mosquito sees things very fast. 
He can see the wings in another mosquito in different positions. His images per second are fast. You see fuzz. You don't see insect wings moving. You just see a blur. Do you know what I mean? Like you see a fan. A fan that just cuts the image value in lighting and you stick your hand in a fan, you feel it. But you can't see the blades of a fan in motion. So <clears throat> when I worked at the aircraft factory, some guy brought in a strobe light and they use it differently than we do. The strobe light goes on every time the helicopter blades are facing you. It goes on. It doesn't go on. Well, when the blades face you, it goes on like... So you always see the blade in fixed position. And when the controls move the blade, you can see the control shove the blade because it photographs all intervals in the rotation which we can't see. All we see is a fan blur. You know what I mean? With a strobe light, did you ever have a strobe light where you can vary this, the interval of the lighting? You can stop a fan in motion. It seems like it stops. Whenever they photograph automobiles on television, the wheels seem to turn the wrong way. Have you noticed that? Because the lighting is is not synchronous with the wheel. You'd have to make your lighting synchronous to make the wheel. You can make it go faster or so or backward. Anything you want by lighting the wheel. Every time the spoke is in this position or in that position, if you turn the light on, it'll look like it's going backwards. So. We have another thing. The bigger you are, the more slowly you move. Dinosaurs never ran. You know, they, they went faster. And the bigger you are, the more gravity affects you. But if you're very small, an ant can move like 200 miles an hour relative to his side. You've seen insects run across these little lizards here. They run across the land. But if he were big, he couldn't run that fast in a gravity field. So when you say, what's the best way to be? Well, if you can, somebody once suggested this, if you can breed human beings genetically so they're this size, one loaf of bread would feed people for a year. You know what I mean? But cats and mice would eat people. So you got other problems. So our size and survival depends on our size relative to other animals. If you were this size, you'd be picked up by the birds and eaten, carried away. So when you, if you made people smaller, there's a negative consequences. You can fall off a building if you're this size and get up and brush the dust off. But you wouldn't live very long. Every goddamn insect, when you're stung by a bee, you'd be dead. And when a mosquito lands on you, ah, you know what I mean? That's what relativity is. So, if we go to another planet, it depends on the conditions of the other planet. We may not be able to survive. So we have to send a probe out there to measure the gravity, the oxygen content. And after studying that, we say, there's not enough oxygen for the average person to live here. Well, gravity will not accommodate to our tires and our space vehicles. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So, normal people brought up in an environment feel that's the way it really is. It is because they were brought up here. So when a guy says, you know, I'd like to study how the world really is. They can't do that. You can only study it relative to yourself. Do you know what that means? I wanted you to know precisely that relativity works and it's a tool to think with. That's all. I want to make sure you got that. How long was that? 37 minutes. All right. What, did we want to cover anything else? I got one question. Yes. Somebody